This story is called The Keeper of the Prophet's Secrets, and it features Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. The Muslims of Medina faced a great deal of trouble, not only from the deniers of the truth, but also from the hypocrites. Probably the hypocrites created the greatest problem of their lives. Most of the hypocrites came from among the Jews and their allies. It was not easy to identify them, for many of them pretended to be Muslims. They had accepted Islam only with their lips, not with their hearts. They continued to conspire against the Prophet and his companions. Among the companions of the Prophet, there was a man called Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. The Prophet, who was well aware of who the hypocrites were, confided with him the names of all the hypocrites, as Hudayfa was on far and wide to be able to keep a secret. He was also entrusted to Hudayfa the task of keeping watch on their activities, so as to protect the Muslims from low scheming. As the hypocrites knew well that the Muslims were on their guard, they conducted themselves with great secrecy. Thus, Hudayfa had a difficult task. The Prophet shared the very sensitive information about the hypocrites only with Hudayfa and not with any other of his companions. So except for Hudayfa and the Prophet himself, no one knew who they were. During the Battle of Handak, the Muslims had to face prolonged hardships and difficulties. They were exhausted by the long siege carried on by the deniers of the truth, and some of them even began to despair. The Prophet decided to send someone into the enemy camp at night to check out the metal and morale of his enemies. As he suspected, they might be breaking down. It was a very dark night. It was, in fact, so dark that if one were to stretch out one's hand, one would not be able to see one's own fingers. Four days of the weather were exceptionally cold and wet. A fierce wind was blowing from the desert, bringing torrential rains. The gusts of wind and the rain lashed at the men and animals with terrible force. The Muslims were both cold and hungry. They longed for the ordeal to be over. Matters were no better in the camp of the deniers of truth. The fierce gusts of wind put out their fires, overturned their tents, and pelted them with sand and dust. They could not see anything, for grains of sand were getting into their eyes. Huddling together, they sat close to each other and hoped they would soon be able to go home. The Prophet took a round of inspection of the Muslim camp. He wanted to put courage into the hearts of his dejected followers and make sure they were all right. When he reached Hudayfa, he said to him, Something is happening among the people of Abu Sufyan. Go secretly into their encampment and bring me news of what is going on there. Following the Prophet's command, Hudayfa sneaked out across the trench, crawled into the enemy camp and melted into the crowd. He saw overturned tents and ejected men talking in whispers and frightened animals. When dawn was near, Abu Sufyan got up and addressed his men. People of Quraysh, I say, you are not in a safe and secure place. Our shelters have been destroyed. Our horses and camels are dying. Our allies have failed us and we have been told they are planning to betray us. On top of that, we are battered by this bitterly cold wind. So get moving. Let's go home. I am leaving. Finishing his sentence, Abu Sufyan went to his camel and mounted it. He struck it and it stood up. His men followed. Hearing the speech and seeing that the Quraysh are ready to leave, Hudayfa returned to the Prophet and told him that their enemies are about to go home. The Prophet was very happy to hear the good news, and the Muslims were relieved that God has heard their prayers. Hudayfa faithfully kept the pledge he had made to the Prophet about not disclosing the hypocrites' names. After the Prophet had passed away, when both Abu Bakr and Umar became Khalifs, they often came to talk to him, trying to find out more about the movements and the activities of the hypocrites. But Hudayfa remained the tight-lipped and cautious. He did not betray the secret entrusted to him by the Prophet. Only Omar was sometimes able to find out something about the hypocrites in an indirect way. 
Once Omar asked Huzaifa, tell me if any of my governors is a hypocrite. One, replied Huzaifa. Point him out to me, ordered Omar. I won't do that, replied Huzaifa. Whenever a Muslim died, Omar would ask, is Huzaifa attending his funeral? If the answer was yes, Omar would attend the prayer, and if the answer was no, he would refrain from joining in the prayer.